worshipers arise. Let the worshipers arise. Let the sons and daughters sing. I surrender my own. I surrender to the King. Drawing a line in the sand. I want to be standing by your side, holding your hand. So let your kingdom come, let it live in me. This is my prayer, this is my plea. Let the worshipers arise. Let the redeemed of the Lord rise up. Rise up, rise up. I am redeemed. 
thankful that I am redeemed. Hallelujah. Woo! Can we just shout one second for the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo! It feels good to be redeemed. I don't know about you guys, but I am so glad that I am redeemed. Hallelujah. If our ushers will get ready, we're going to take up our offering. Let's not forget Sister uh, Marilyn for her mom, her, for help her mom with her, with her uh, funeral. You can put on your tithe, or you can also do it at the, at the website. If we'll put our, our decoration up on the board, I will say it slow for some people. Got to talk a little fast, so you got to stay with me. Upon the authority of your word, I have given, and it shall be given to me. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither. I bring my tithes today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing, there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, royalties received. My whole family saved and walking with God. Perfect health and abundance to walk in divine favor and blessings. I am blessed going in and I'm blessed going out. And all I will do will prosper in Jesus' name. Come on, church, let's worship one more time for the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for the Holy Ghost. I'm thankful that I have the Holy Ghost. I'm thankful that I can call on His name anytime it doesn't matter if it's a good day or if it's a bad day if it's a trial or it's a triumph I can call on him and he's faithful I love this this song that we're going to sing I love when it says I'm never going back to the way it was is there anything in your life that you never want to go back to is there anything that you have faced in your life that you never want to go back to well, you know, one thing that I don't want to go back to is I don't want to go back to just taking for granted the house of the Lord. I don't want to go back to th just taking for granted the presence of the Holy of Holies. I don't want to turn back and go back to just having church as usual. I want to feel His presence every moment, every second that I'm here because I don't know how much longer that I have on this earth, but the moments that I have, I want to give it to Him. He deserves all of my worship. He deserves all of my praise. He is a great God, and I thank Him for what He's done in my life, and I just want to be grateful tonight in worship. Oh, I've been changed. He
more fear. My past is over. Sing it one more time. Oh, my chains. Oh, my guilt. My guilt. Go ahead and play. Sins he forgives. It's forgiven. No more chains. No more fear. My past. My past is over. One more time. All oh, my shame. Guilt. My sins. They're forgiven. hearts that I feel here tonight I can feel the presence of the Lord and he is receiving grateful hearts you see it's almost the same as if we go back to the cross every time and we see what he did for us on the cross the blood that he shed for our sins we're a people who are so thankful that he took away the sins of the world and he took it upon his shoulders and he put it under the blood and I'm so thankful tonight that I can live a free life and I don't have to live in sin and I don't have to live in fear and I don't have to live in guilt hallelujah church let's just thank him for a moment Jesus you are the greatest thing that has ever happened to us we are so thankful for your sacrifice that you've given on Calvary God we will never forget what you've done for us Lord we're so thankful that we can live a life free God hallelujah 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 Oh, let the Holy Ghost continue to move right now. Hallelujah. Jesus is working. Hallelujah. He's moving among our lives. If we'll be thankful unto him, he's going to pour out his spirit. He's going to touch our lives. He's going to give us strength for tomorrow. He's going to help us in our troubles. If we can just be thankful unto him. Oh, God, we want to show you that we're grateful. Right now is the moment. Right now is the moment, today is the day I've been changed, I've been changed, I have waited for this moment to come, and I won't let it I won't let it pass me by, I won't go back, I can't, I can't go back. Go back.
right now. Can we? Let's thank him. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is the moment. This is the day. Hallelujah. Praise God. Lift up your voices right now. Come on, let's magnify. Amen. The name of the Lord right now. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. God is so good. Praise God. Amen. He is faithful. Amen. He is true, steadfast. Amen. How many has found the Lord to be good? <laughs> Praise God. He is without question. Uh, he is a great God. Amen. Amen. Our Sunday school is going to go downstairs. Praise God. Amen. We want to before we go any further, take a moment and uh, amen, go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, continue praying for the Kent family. Uh, I had Brother Kent's funeral today and I uh, want to pray for his wife, Sister Mary Kent. Uh, this Sunday would have been their 73rd wedding anniversary. 73 years. Wow. Amen. And um, I know a tremendous adjustment for her and of course the rest of the family we want to continue praying God to give them comfort amen amen the Lord is able we want to continue praying also for sister Elaine's niece here has come to come to terms that you can't control anything it, we we don't have that ability but we know a god who can do anything and uh, we surrender it to him amen how many have loved ones family that in that are in need of a of a god to intervene amen of course our nation um, <coughs> amen our nation's in a state of chaos um, I, I tell you uh, but again the lord's in control we want to pray for our nation, uh, our president, our, our government. Uh, how many will, will pray for a revival of the fear of God among our nation's leaders? That's what we need. Amen. And uh, favor with those leaders. Why don't we stand right now and uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we love you. We thank you today for your, God, your, your goodness. We're thankful for your presence and Lord God, we there's a, there's quite a list here tonight, Lord, of needs and situations, and oh, we just present them to you. We ask, Lord, for your will to be done. We ask God that you would, Lord, intervene, minister, bring bring healing, comfort. Lord, we plead your blood today over every need that has been mentioned here tonight that is represented, Lord, in this congregation. We ask, Lord, as you will touch uh, God and minister to. Uh, and we thank you for it, God, for what you're doing. We pray for our nation. We pray, God, for our, Lord, our president. We pray for our government. Lord, let, let your will be done. Let there be a revival of the fear of God among our nation's leaders. We ask, Lord, you, let you, Lord, your will to be done tonight in this service. God, as you will touch us and minister to us. In Jesus' name. Everybody said in Jesus' name. Praise God. You can be seated for a moment tonight. Man, it's hot. Whew, my goodness. Amen. But I'm I'm kind of like Sister Pruitt. I'll take this over the cold. I'll just sweat and deal with it for now because winter time is coming. But anyway, it's hot. Amen. And uh, amen. It's uh, it's Wednesday. Uh, by the looks of things, y'all had a pretty rough week. <laughs> I can kind of tell on Wednesday nights how your week has gone so far. And, and you know it, it, it does it comes sometimes some weeks are wearier than others amen um, and and part of that's life um, praise God life can certainly gives us uh, challenges 
As mentioned uh, already, Brother Kent's funeral, every time I attend a funeral or participate in, in, in a funeral, I, I'm just once again reminded that if the Lord tarries, uh, there will be those who will gather for that purpose for me. Amen. If the Lord tarries and allows each of us, we're going to, somebody's going to attend your funeral at some point or another. It is appointed unto man. Uh, I used to hear that verse quoted, it's appointed unto man once to die, and I thought it was saying like you wanted to die. I'm like, why in the world would he write that? But it's, it's meaning that it's appointed unto man, we're going to die. We're going to meet that appointment at some, at some point. Brother Kent was 90 years old. I don't know if the Lord will allow me to live another 45 years or not, but whether it's 90 years old, whether it's 45, uh, the Lord knows the day and the time, and uh, I want to live my life uh, to where, as we preached at his funeral today, that as Paul said, for I am now ready to be offered. Amen. The time of my departure is at hand. The way I live my life will determine whether I can make that de declaration, for I am ready. And the reality is, Brother Bruce, I need to be ready today, even if my departure isn't today. <laughs> we all want to, within us, there's a desire to want to live. Uh, I don't think any of us wake up in the morning and say, well, today's it. We don't know that. Man, but it's coming, and I want to live my life today so that I can be prepared for when my departure comes, that I am ready. Amen. Doing that, um, it, is a, it is a compilation of moments. Life is nothing but small segments of time that are compiled together that, that completely fulfill, or fill a, a lifetime. Uh, over my, my years of living days, hours, minutes. Uh, I've, I've rejoiced with some wonderful moments. I have been heartbroken in other moments. Uh, I, 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 have had, uh, I have had moments of failure. Amen. Aren't you thankful that you're not defined by your failure? Amen. If we were to sit here tonight and kind of take a, 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 a written log of all of our lives, uh, all of us could say, well, here's my failures, and, and some of our lists are pretty long, but we're not defined by those failures. Amen. We have all, maybe at times, succumbed to moments of weakness, uh, things that you look back and you're not proud of. Uh, maybe there are some, as they say, hindsight is always 2020. And you look back and you think, man, I wish I, wish I could erase those. But reality, again, you're not defined by just one moment of time. It is, a, it is a compilation of many, many moments. Amen. And so I say all of that to say this, that, that our lives, the, our lifestyles, the way in which we live is determined by small segments of time. Amen. Uh, it's amazing how we easily can justify our actions by saying, well, it's only just, you know, it's, it's such a small thing. But those small things grow, and they become bigger. Point of the matter is, I want to live my life is every moment I can in a way that I can make the declaration, I am now ready to be offered for my departure is at hand. I don't want to let a moment go by. I really don't. I don't want to take a chance. Uh, I don't want to hope that, that I'm doing good in one moment when I'm not. I want, to, I want to be as steady and as steadfast as what I can. Paul talked about, not that he was perfect, but he did mention that he strived for perfection. There's nothing wrong with striving for, for perfection. It, it's, not, it's not someone claiming, oh, I'm perfect. No, we're not. We know that. But we're, we're striving for it. We're, we're, trying, we're trying to apply in our life things that will help us to live this walk with God. I want to go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. And um, I'm, I'm going to begin reading uh, verse number 3. Paul, he is writing, of course, to his, uh, his basically his son in the Lord, amen, Timothy. Um, he says, if anyone teaches a different doctrine 
and does not agree with the sound words of our Lord Jesus Christ and the teaching that accords with godliness. Now, throughout the New Testament, you will find Paul gives words of warning concerning just what any... He said, you're going to hear all different types of winds of doctrine. Uh, you're going to hear all different types of opinions, but... But he said, you got to be really careful, uh, amen, that, that you don't agree the, or with those who either teach a different doctrine or who don't agree with the sound words of our Lord Jesus Christ. He goes on and he describes this kind of person. He says that he is puffed up with conceit. He understands nothing. He has an unhealthy craving for controversy and for quarrels about words which produce envy, dissension, slander, and evil suspicions. That kind of sounds like Facebook, doesn't it? Amen. Craving for controversy, quarrels about words, which produce envy, dissension, slander, and evil suspicions. It's amazing what people will type standing in front of a computer screen that they would never say face-to-face. -face. Amen. Things are put on that social platform that really would have never been said had that social platform not provided itself for them. Amen. Let me tell you, it's just as wrong if you type it as if you say it. Amen. We need to be accountable to everything we speak, type, and even as far as that goes, even our thoughts. He goes on and says that they are constant friction among people who are depraved in mind and deprived of the truth. Imagining that godliness is a means of gain. Godliness with contentment, Paul says, is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we cannot take anything out of the world. Again, today, when we traveled from the funeral home to the cemetery, the hearse that carried Brother Kent's body was not pulling a U-Haul trailer. Nothing. He could take nothing with him. You'll never see it. None, none of this worldly stuff can you take with you. Paul said you came, you came to this world with nothing. You can take nothing with you. But if you have food and clothing with these things, we will be content. Amen? But those who desire to be rich, Paul says they fall into temptation, into a snare, into, into, a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. Here's a familiar verse I'm sure you've heard before. For the love of God money is the root of all kinds of evil. It is through this craving, which means desire or longing, that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. I want to, just for a few moments tonight, I want to ask all of us a question, and that question is, what is your motive? Why do you do what you do? Amen. Why is it that you live the life that you live? I've done this a long time. I have, I have been living for the Lord. Um, almost three decades now. Amen. It's a long time. I'm very familiar with this setting. Amen. I have pastored now for over 20 years, and that doesn't mean a whole lot. It's just I, I've learned a little bit, thank the Lord. <laughs> Amen. But I've got so much more to learn. But I'm familiar with this. Uh, Brother Bruce the other day was talking about, you know, he's helping out doing some service leading and He's like, man, pastor, sometimes I get up there, I just I get so nervous. I'm like, yep, I completely know where you're coming from. It's not that I don't get nervous anymore because I'm, I'm never really, really comfortable behind this desk. But I've done it for so long that it's, it's a familiar thing for me. 
Amen. I'm used to this. I have a, I have a, a, um, a routine in my life. Amen. I, I, I very rarely ever not do the routine. My routine consists of, you know, in the morning getting up, getting ready. Uh, I've got to have my coffee. Thank the Lord for coffee. Amen. I, I'm, I'm one of those that drink coffee, and, and my day's just not the same without it, so I'll make sure my coffee is made. And uh, then the, the very first thing I do is I, I open up my Bible, which oftentimes is my iPad, and I read my Bible. I, I do it every day. I, I try every day to find some time, and usually it's those first few moments of the morning that I, I'll find a place, and I'll, I'll go to prayer, and, and, and typically I'm, I'm praying generally about the same thing every day. Amen. I'm praying for my family. I'm praying for all of you. I'm praying for our nation. I'm praying for our region. These are things I'm familiar with. I do it every single day. But I don't do it just because I've always done it. Does that make sense? Amen. It's easy if we're not careful to just kind of get in a routine and we, we just do it because that's what we've always done. And, 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 and you can almost do it without thinking. And, and I, it becomes so familiar. It's good to be familiar, but I've oftentimes, I have got to check my motive. i got to know what is it that motivates me to be who I am, to do what I do. It's not just because that I've got the title of a pastor. It's a good thing that I do it because I am a pastor, but that cannot be my sole motivation when it comes to reaching into this word and, and, and finding un, trying to find understanding and, 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 and truths. Uh, amen. It's a good thing that it is done, but Brother Bruce, it's got to go more than just because I'm a pastor. Uh, it's, I believe it's a good thing uh, for a husband, uh, amen, in order for him to, to be able to be a good husband. It is a good thing for him to get his nose in this book. But, but just because I'm a husband, uh, that, that it cannot be the only reason that I'm doing what I'm doing. Uh, I, I, I don't doubt one moment that it is extremely important uh, for me as a father, as a, as a, as a dad, if I want to be a good dad, guess where I'm going to find that instruction from? Right here. Uh, and I, I'm telling you, I my children benefit because I, I keep my nose in the book. It helps me. Uh, amen. Uh, so, so much. But again, not just because I'm a dad should not be the only reason why I, I'm wanting to read the book. Uh, all of those are good reasons, uh, but when it comes right down to it, uh, I can't do it for my kids. Uh, I can't do it just because I'm married to a wonderful wife. I can't do it because I'm privileged to pastor a, a wonderful church. But there has got to be a soul desire within me because I am in love with a Savior. Amen. That has got to be my number one motivation. Amen. Because it's very possible that I may not, ever, I may not always pastor. Amen. It, it, it could be that the, those titles I have today could all be stripped away from me. But still yet, what is going to reside is a relationship that has been built. It hasn't happened just overnight, but it's something that I'm trying to develop every single day of my life. It's a compilation of many moments. Amen. I'm trying to grow. It's a slow process. God is still working in my life. Amen. Brother Lewis was with us today, and, and uh, oh, we, were, we were reminiscing about my first message I ever preached, and he told me again. He said, son, I'm telling you, I, you had a good heart, but I thought, oh, no, he'll never make a preacher. <laughs> Amen. And I preached about from Acts chapter 19 where the Bible says, talks about those 12 men of John the Baptist, uh, 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 disciples. Uh, and the Bible says, and they were all about 12. They were, there's about 12. I thought it meant they were 12 years old. And I preached that you can get the Holy Ghost at any age. He had forgotten that. Then I, re, I reminded him, he, yep, I remember that now. He had to tell me after the service, Jeff, that was a good message. But they weren't 12 years old. There was 12 of them. I didn't know. 
Amen. But guess what? God has been faithful to me. Thank the Lord. Amen. He helps us. We grow. It doesn't happen overnight. But if we'll stay with it and we'll put one moment with another moment and you compile them, it becomes you start seeing the evidence. It's a process. Amen. But I'm telling you what's going to really help that process is that you have the right motive in your life. The why in which you do what you do is extremely important. The word motive, it's defined as the underlying reasons for a cause of action. Scripture stresses uh, the importance of doing things with the intention of honoring and glorifying God and building up His people. That is very, that is on purpose. You don't just accidentally become a child of God. You don't just wake up one day and, oh, I guess that's... No, it is, you've got to be purposeful about it. It is something you've got to be intentional about. Uh, uh, Paul talked about his, he, he died daily. We quote that scripture. You know what he's saying? I am very intentional about living for God. I don't go a day thinking I can do it on my own. But I've got to start that day out on an altar and giving myself to God. Because I know I can't do it by myself. I've got to have the Lord working in my behalf. That part of the human being in which thought takes place and perception and decisions to do good or evil, that is all concerning motive. Motive. What is your motive today? Amen. We are we're Christian, yes. We are, I guess you would consider us Protestant, yes, that's what we are. Amen. Our sign out, outside says that we're Pentecostal. Yep, that's appropriate. Amen. Even furthermore, we're apostolic. We believe the apostolic doctrine. We teach that. Yes, we do. With that comes certain uh, distinguishing characteristics. Yes, it does. Amen. The way, the way our ladies dress. Yes, there's a distinction there. Amen. Men, uh, we may not be as noticeable, if you will, uh, but but our attitude ought to be ought to be noticeable, Amen. We ought to. Paul said we ought to lift up holy hands, men, without wrath and doubting, Amen. I believe, men. I believe we ought to lead this church in worship, Amen. You know why? Because we ought to be the priest of our home, Amen. Well, I'm just not as emotional as women. Well, that that's probably true, Amen. But I want to. I want to lead. I want to lead in worship, not 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 necessarily to be seen, but again because God, I, I am I am in, I'm a direct contact with you, and you're working in my in my life, Amen. But but the reality is here today, we we have a we have a culture, the church has a culture, all right, and that culture, if we're not careful, we can become faithful to the culture, but not to the one who really matters. In other words, we can, we can be and do what, what is appropriate within a culture and, and yet not have a relationship with the one that matters. It's amazing. It's, it's, called, it's called a herd mentality. That's not hearing. That's H-E-R-D, kind of like a, a herd of cows. And I'm not calling you cows, okay? Amen. But we, we, we're people, and, and we have this group mentality that, that we, we want to, all of us have a sense to belong. And it's good. Hey, let me tell you, a church is a good place to belong to. You're in a good place today. Amen. And so we have a sense of belonging. But if we're not careful, we can just kind of participate by doing what everybody else is doing. And, and, and if we're not careful, we, we don't really know why we're doing what we're doing. We're just doing what everybody else is doing. And while what everybody else is doing may be good, it, it, it may even be correct, you still need to know why you're doing what you're doing. Amen? Praise God. I've shared this many times, the uh, service where I just started coming, started gotten to church, got the Holy Ghost, and we were at a rally meeting, and, and man, the place was packed out. I believe we were, we, we were in Morehouse, I believe. Our place was packed out. People were screaming and shouting. The sound system wasn't real clear, and the preacher, he'd just get in the mic, and he would rah, 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 and, and I remember he would do that, and people would just start shouting, and I, I looked at someone next to him and said, what, what did he say? And 
they, I don't know what he said, but it must have been good. And they were, I'm like, no, I want to know what he said. I don't want to just shout because you're shouting. I want to know what he said because I'm sure it was good, but it'll help me if I know what he said. Amen. I don't want to just do what everybody else does. My motivation has got to go further than just mimicking my neighbors. But I'm telling you, church, I and you need to have a love relationship with the Lord of this word. Because if you will fall in love with him, amen, you're going to do the right thing, absolutely, amen. And everybody else that falls in love with him, they're going to do the same thing as well. Hallelujah. Verse 5 of 1 Timothy chapter 6, it says, this is in the New Living Translation, these people always cause trouble. Their minds are corrupt. They have turned their backs on the truth. And to them, a show of godliness is just a way to become wealthy. Now, I'm not suggesting here today that you're only living the way you're living or looking the way you look for a way to be wealthy. My, my point I want to make here, I want to point out, is their motive was wrong. Amen. Philippians 1 and 9 says, In this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that you may approve things that are excellent, to, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. I believe that God does honor sincerity. Now, you've got to have more than just sincerity. You've also got to have truth. But if your heart is sincere, if your heart is pure, and you are seeking God, guess who's going to make sure you get to know who He is? God will reveal Himself to you with a sincere heart. I believe that. 1 Timothy 1 and 5, Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart, and of a good conscience, and of faith unfeigned. Another translation says, The purpose of, of my instruction is that all believers would be filled with love, that comes from a pure heart. Everybody say, a pure heart. Everybody say that. There you go. I didn't hear anybody. A pure heart. My heart has got to be pure. Amen. 1 John 3 and 18. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. I want to be real. Amen. I want my heart to be pure. I want to be sincere. The word sincerity, it means a personal quality of, of living life from a pure motive without deceit. I don't have, I don't want to have any underlying uh, uh, motivations or motives uh, but honestly Lord I want to be pure in your sight uh, I want to live for you uh, I want to be what you would want me to be amen Jeremiah though reminds us in chapter 17 and verse 9 talking about the heart the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it Amen. See, that's why it, it takes more than just saying, well, I, I'll just be a good person. That's why we got to have redemption. That's why salvation is so important. Because our heart alone without God is deceitful. It is desperately wicked. That's why you and I, amen, Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. Mark 7 and 21, for, for from within, out of the heart of men, again, out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness, all these horrible things we read about in the news. Guess where they all come from? Guess where they originate from? The heart of men and women. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. Amen. We, we need a Savior, don't we? He 
Ephesians 4 and 20 says, But you have not so learned Christ, if so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, that means the former lifestyle of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. You can't get there on your own. You can't think yourself good enough. That's why Galatians 3 and 27 says, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. You repent of your sins. You make a turnaround, a decision to turn your to, to change your ways. And then you take that dead man and you bury him in the waters of baptism with the name of Jesus being called over you, which enters you into covenant. And the Bible says in Romans 6 and 3, Know ye not that so many of us, as we're baptized into Jesus Christ, we're baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we would be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, and henceforth we should not serve sin. You can't do that on your own, but through Jesus Christ, amen, our Savior, redemption is ours. God changes our motives. God changes our desires. God changes our passions. Yes, we still deal with our flesh. And yes, we have to bring our flesh under subjection. But we could never accomplish it without, amen, the effect of Calvary in our life. Amen. The motive this morning or this evening of your flesh. It's been a long week for me too. The motive of your flesh. You may fool a few. You may even fool me. But there's one you'll never fool. He knows the very thoughts and intents of your heart. He knows your motives. So I have found it just a whole lot better to say, God, I don't want to hide nothing from you. Because I can't anyway. I'd just rather come before you and Lord say, here I am. Create in me a clean heart. Renew in me a right spirit. I, I'm going to come to that altar. Amen. And Lord, I'm asking you to forgive me. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Amen. But, but Lord, help me today. Cleanse me. Give me a clear mind and a clean heart. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to put up an offensive picture, okay? Don't be, don't be too offended. Go ahead and put that picture. Yes, that is the cows behind. There's a purpose to that picture, though. Neil Jordan likes to get in, he likes to get inside an, an animal's mind, and uh, oftentimes he's a biologist. He works to save certain species. In his article I read, it says take take lions for example. Lions are ambush predators. Even though they're known as the king of the jungle, even though they're powerful beasts, they do rely on, the, on stealth and the element of surprise in order to bring down their prey. He said this, he said, as soon as they lose that element of su surprise, as soon as the prey sees them, oftentimes they will abandon their hunt. That is why he and fellow researchers go to Botswana and they paint eyes on the rumps of cows. They hope it'll be a, that it will prove a low-cost way to protect livestock from lions. 
and lions from being killed by farmers in retaliation. Dr. Jordan, who holds a research position, he says, we wanted to hijack this natural response by painting eyes on the rumps of cows so that lions could be tricked into thinking they'd been seen and would abandon the hunt. He said it's the same kind of psychological trickery that was employed by woodcutters in India who ward off tigers by wearing face masks on the backs of their heads. Butterflies also do it. They avoid becoming bird food thanks to the eye-like patterns on their wings. Can I tell you tonight that God is watching us. Every action, every thought, every motive of the heart is laid bare before Him. How does that knowledge affect us? 2 Corinthians 2 and 17 says, You see, we are not like the many hucksters who preach for personal profit, but we preach the word of God with sincerity and with Christ's authority, knowing that God is watching us. See, the enemy does his most heinous work darkness. To get you to think oh, you've got a cover of darkness that's hiding. Nothing's hidden from God. Amen. That's why God is likened to that of light. <laughs> because that light, amen, it exposes everything. And it, I'm telling you, you cannot change what you refuse to acknowledge. And if it lies in the shadows of darkness, you may be not as apt to acknowledge it. But when you get close to God, it's a light that may be blinding, but I'm telling you, amen, reality is He's watching us. Amen. Praise God, we're getting ready to land here tonight. What's your motive? What's your purpose? What is it that gets you going when it comes to living for God? I'm glad that everybody that, that comes here is here. I'm so thankful. Amen. I, I, I will admit to you that when I first came to church back in the early, early 90s, I had a heart to love God, but I was also attracted to a certain female. Amen. Who happened to be my wife's older sister. Amen. Wasn't very long, though, that my wife and I, amen, started to like each other. And there were days, of course, I mean, I was glad to be there because she was there. Amen. But there, there, there came a point, and it will with everybody, where I got to do this, not for, one, not for any other person, but it has got to come down to, I am choosing to do this. Amen. My children, as they were growing up, they never had the option to stay home from church. We never even allowed them to even consider it. But guess what? As they're getting older, and as they move out of our house, they'll make that decision themselves. I hope they, I hope they make the decision to go to church. I, we've tried our best to just to, to teach it and live it in front of them. But guess what? They'll make that decision, and they need to. Amen. I want them to do it not because I do it. I want them to do it because they recognize the same value. Amen. So tonight as we're landing, I want to go to Psalms 139. I pray this many, many days. Verse 23. This is David speaking. He says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me. And know my thoughts. Verse 24, he says, See if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. What David was acknowledging here is, God, I don't even fully know myself. I may think I do, but when it comes right down to it, there are things about me that I'm not even aware of. 
but Lord, I know that you see everything and you know everything. And while I may not see it myself, Lord, I'm opening myself to you right now and I'm asking you, God, search me. I may not see it. I may not even realize it's there. But God, I want you to try me. I want you to know my thoughts. I want you to see if there's any wicked way in me. And then, Lord, I want you to help lead me into the way everlasting. For when my moment comes and the time of my departure is at hand, I want to, it to have been said or to be able to be said that he was ready, amen, to offer himself. He was ready. You know how I'm going to be ready? By compiling all these moments together. But what's going to help me keep those moments steady is I'm going to have, i got to have the right motive. I've got to have a heart, amen, that loves God, that seeks to know him, to seek his face. Amen. I don't want to fake it to make it. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I'm telling you, I want to be real and genuine. And God, I want you to search my life. As we stand here today, I want to invite you around this altar, find you a place for the next few moments. And God, here I am. Oh, once again, help me, Lord. Lead me in the way in which I should go. In Jesus' name. So many things My God's been good to me I have family and friends Who share in all that I do But if I lose it all It will only 